Yeah. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Three Real Motion Angling. It's your man Khalil G. The sun's out, and I get to record. It's wonderful, but I'm not gonna go to the water just yet. I want to talk about something real quick. A lot of people have come up to me and said to me that they like fishing and they would love to go do it but if they went with me or went fishing with me that I would have to bait the line and do the hook and do all the stuff for them and I'm like oh so that just brought me to the realization that a lot of people don't really still understand the basics of fishing so I'm going to do a quick basic video about some lines the simplest of bass lures and a little bit of technique on how to use a couple a little bit of underwater footage you know something different stick around stay tuned you might be able to learn something and hope some of these techniques work out for you let's get down to it all right as you can see right here on the table we have the five inch single worm the five inch single worm is a staple in bass fishing it's uh, all year long lure you can use it all the time anytime you can actually catch multiple species of fish on a worm so these are soft plastics you know soft plastics come in many different kinds of designs they can get they can be very soft and flimsy and you know wobbly wobbly and then they can be solid you know real solid a lot harder to to shake rattle and roll so you know there are different kinds but we're not going to get into that right now all i want to do is show you five different rigging techniques for a soft plastic worm that you can use right now and catch fish all right today we're going to start with something simple we have two hooks here one is a straight shank hook by the straightness of its shank and one is an ewg which is extra wide gap, which is why it has a, a swell and it kind of loops around there at the bottom, trying to keep them from sliding out of my hand. But we're going to talk about these. These are basic common hooks for rigging worms, and you'll normally find them in a standard size of about 3 aught to 4 aught, which you'll normally say on the package, but they range anywhere from 1 aught to 7 aught that, that I own myself. I'm pretty sure it might get bigger than that. So we'll start with the simplicity. We're gonna start with the straight shank hook and a worm here. All right, so when you have your worm, your five inch Cinco, four inch Cinco, your Ned rig, anything that you can rig in this Texas rig manner would pretty much be rigged exactly the same way. So you take your bait here, which is normally there's two ends of it. You can see the smaller side is normally the tail there's a little ridge space right here in the center that gets really smooth, you know, like how worms have their, their little space. So they, they're all kind of set up to have this here for a reason. And then, of course, the fatter part, what we can call the head of the bait. So what you do is you take your extra wide or your straight shank hook that I have here, and then you take your bait. So you take the very head of the bait, and you see right here where you have the barb on this straight shake hook and that barb is you know once you pull something in that's going to keep it from kind of coming back out that way that's that's what the fish gets stuck on um when you are inserting this into here you don't want to go to right before you start going around the bend of this head so we'll start with the simple we go right down the center you go right down the center till about there like I showed you and then you start to come out the side you have a couple ways to see you came right out the side of that right up there at the head it's kind of hard to see from my angle but there yeah it's dead down the center right down the head so then you pull it all the way through all the way up to the ring so see I'm pulling it all the way up don't worry about it it'll come all the way up but then you got to turn it so this is a very hard plastic but yeah you can get it right up over the eye hole and then you have it pulled down it sits up there like that so again we're back at the soft part here so now at this point you should have a something that looks very similar to this you have to turn it at that last step you know pull it all the way through and turn it so that the hook goes back up towards the bait 
and then you just find you a space you see where it's going to come through at so you find your thumb spot there and then you pull all the way back you come all the way through out the other end and then you pull it forward a little bit and you put the nose of it right back into the skin and you have a Texas rigged worm in this weedless so nothing's going to snag on it nothing's going to grab it but when that worm bites it it compresses down real easily they bite it it goes down that hook goes where it needs to be all right so now we're going to use another five inch cinco but now we're going to use the extra wide gap hook so it's basically the exact same technique except for it just looks a little different you're going right back right back through the center head a good portion of the way down right before you start going over this one's a little more predominant to see in the extra wide gap you see exactly when that head starts to turn because it's a very sharp turn so you get it right out of that head before it turns you get it all the way around you pull it all the way down and through then right when you get to that bend up top is when you have to turn it to get it back over that up to the eyelid and see this one's a little shorter of a hook so I'm gonna go right in through the belly about the top and that right there makes the worm do what it does then you stretch that back forward just a little bit and get the skin, skin hook it right up under the skin there and then you still have a worm that's weedless and efficient and you can use either one of these types of hooks and be efficient here they are side by side the straight shank hook and the extra wide gap hook they both pretty much carry the same purpose but you know depends on what you like this one you know has a deeper bites and this one's you know it's just a little different depending on what you're fishing because the bass can bite that they both bite them exactly the same the hookup ratio is generally about the same um, so I use them both depending on what I'm doing but this is considered more of a worm hook and you can use this for various other species of baits paddle tails um, creature baits various things like that so but it look has a quick side by side all right another one of my favorite ways to rig is the shaky head a shaky head is another type of worm hook but it already comes with the weight attached to the bottom which makes the action it makes it stand up like this in the water so when it hits the bottom it stands the bait up for you so this is a wonderful thing to use I catch this is my pretty much one of my favorite ways to fish a five inch or longer type of worm we're going to start with a simpler method for using the shaky head now this is a standard type of shaky head it's normally round you know decent size look this is a very big version I think this is like a five or six or something crazy like that as far as the size of this shaky head is you know don't quote me on that I'm not a hundred percent sure um, and it's got a little bit of hook in my skin but it's got a little bit of worm keeper right there so basically what you can do with this there are two different ways I'm gonna show you both ways but I'm not with this I'm gonna show you this one first the simplest way is straight through and unlike previous with the other baits where you just pop the head out right there this one you just run it up run it up and I always say to right before right as it starts to come around you keep it nice and centered in there as long as you can and then right as it starts to come around you you pop it back out of the skin it's got a lot of neck to cover to get down to the bottom there so I figure we can just keep pushing it keep pushing it over that keeper all the way up to the head there and then you end up with something that looks like that and when you fish this which I'll show you later it has a very unique action of hitting the bottom and standing the bait up to do a little dance and that's what you want from that so that's one way with the hook exposed easier to snag on things anything you're bouncing past you touch this hook and it's got the whole thing is going to be holding on to it so this is one way to do it and let me show you the other 
now that we got another worm now here is the other one this one is slightly different as you can see it has a worm keep off to the front here with that worm keep off to the front there it's designed to for the exact way I'm about to rig it and show you um, which you would normally be able to do the Texas rig way which is you slide it through the head you pop it out like you would have normally done you run it down and then you put it in like you would have done the Texas rig like I showed you earlier so it would be kind of like that which is the intended purpose and it will still have the weight at the bottom but with this very specific hook you don't have to run that entire situation you literally just push your bait on to the bait keep you push it in that way and what that does is it locks your bait in place for you without you having to do the Texas rig so then it just pushes in there and then you take this part of the plastic same exact method and you just stick it except for with this one you don't pull it all the way back out of the skin you leave it in there you leave it dug in right before it comes out of the top there so that the worm still sits in line and then it looks like that sits in the water has a very unique action of course okay and here we are with the side by side one with hook exposed and one with hook not exposed and as you can see they're both great ways to fish them the hooks and lines will both be tied in the same direction but one will be weedless and a little easier to retrieve without snagging and one won't be but they are both efficient and they will both catch fish and I have caught fish in both techniques and last but not least we got our last Stanko 5 inch my one of my tiniest but favorite techniques the wacky rig now the wacky rig hook is small and small on purpose because of the way that you rig it versus those big big hook we were just using you know a three to four five odd hook is you know three times the size of this thing so this compared to the worm very 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 small hook but it's good in so many different ways there's different many different techniques you can do with this very hook so the wacky rig is a simple technique where you find the center of the bait which is normally right past that soft spot that we showed you the previous how there's a soft spot here where it's flat and unribbed and right past that is normally the sweet spot you can hold it about there and you'll see an even flow with the bait you need that even wobble see how that does that so that's how you know it's right there so then what you would do is you just take that hook straight in at the center point and you don't even come out the you come right out immediately like right out the one of the sides there because what you want is that hook right there just holding just enough of it so that you can do the wobble this looks wonderful in water I caught tons of fish in this manner small bass big bass they all eat this same rig they love this rig put a wire get a little hook I mean a little line on this thing and you flip it push it through the water which of course I will show you even with this hook being exposed it's still a really really good setup because it doesn't really be it's not really in the grass like that because it's a the action you keep you carry this to get it to moving and doing what you need it to do all right ladies and gentlemen and this time i'm going to show you my simplest and favorite way to rig up a texas rig and that's with a weight or without a weight which i'll show you the weight later so what you do you're here and here you have your eyelid so what i'll do is you basically you run the string through the eyelid And what I like to do is 
just get enough of the string through. It's hard to see, so I, you know, it's a fishing line. Uh, and I basically make a, a small, I bring it down the line, I mean, but down the, the shank of the hook, and I make a small loop down at the bottom just by bringing it back around and holding it back up here. And then you'll end up with that piece you just brought through, the one that's going through the line hole, the eyelid, and then the one you just brought back up, which makes the small hole loop down there at the bottom, right? So then you take that, you hold it, and then the end that's loose, you just start wrapping it around, you know, four or five times, however many you feel comfortable with, right? What's left is you take that piece that you just finished running, I mean spinning around, you bring it back down through the eye hole that you made out the bottom. You pull it back through that hole. And then you can pull them tight. Well, hold on to that end and pull that end. And as you'll see, it'll start to tighten up. Let it go. It slides up the line. And what you want it to do is come right up there. What this technique does is it puts the fishing line under the eyelid hole. You basically cut this tag end off. All right, so as you can see, you basically cut that little tag end off or cut it down, whatever's easier. And then same thing. You put it back into the bait. See if I can run it back through. It's already a little banged up, but this is what the point, the important part is. So when you come up here, it disappears into the line there. And of course, my bait is tattered up because I've hooked it and rehooked it several times at this point. But anyway. The important part is that it looks like that. Where the hook, the line, everything that's coming out of the top of his head is the the string, which is partially invisible to fish. So that's how that would look in the end. Okay, and now we're gonna show you the other technique, except for this time I'm gonna put a weight on it so you can see how to do the weight. We'll start with the weight because you always start with the weight. The string, all weights, no matter which brand, unless you're buying a clamp on weight, but they all have a hole that goes right down the center of it. And then it looks like a little bullet, truthfully, but they're called bullet weights, so they should look like a bullet. This is a tungsten bullet weight. It's a 5 16 which it says down there at the bottom, which is why I like these weights. But basically, you run this string right down the initial bullet side like it's, it's shooting up the string so that way it's it's on the string basically and then with that you kind of just let that rotate up the string so you can get back to lining up your rod I mean lining up your your hook so now I'm going to use the the other hook the EWG I'm going to show you this technique where you run the line through the eyelid like we did previously, just run it run through. But instead of making it end there, you take it, you rotate it around. You get, I got plenty of string behind my hand. And then you run it back through the same eyelid hole. Now don't pull it all the way through because if you do that, of course, it's just gonna come all the way out because you basically just made a loop hole at the back end here. So it's basically double string here so you make sure you have enough string to do what you need to do but what you do is then you take these and you basically tie them around each other like when you tie in the original first knot you ever learned to tie you tie them around each other bring both pieces through the hole there oh sorry that is pre-snagged itself on the hook all right so yeah then you bring both ends together through there and then right before you pull it down you put the hook through it again through the big hoop you just made and then you just pull 
the two tiny pieces that you were holding onto at the top, you just pull it all together. And when you're done, that's called the Palomar knot. It's one of the strongest knots there is in the bass fishing world. And that leaves you with that. And then you let the weight come back down and like that. And that's why you leave the weight shaped the way it is so that it can sit and rest on there. And of course, once it's rigged up, same process, you Texas rigging it, you roll it around, you find your sweet spot, you get in it, you skin hook it, and now when you're looking at it, it just looks like an extension on the worm. Okay, that's what it's supposed to look like there. And then when you fish that, this kind of slides up and down the line, which makes the bait kind of float independently of it. Anybody? An anybody? Anybody there? Anybody there? Okay. We're going to get to my favorite part now. The part I've been waiting to do the entire time, which is put them in the bucket so we can get some action on video. This should be cool. Stay tuned. All right. <clears throat> We're going to start with the the weighted Texas rig. And it first drops in, of course, it goes straight to the bottom. Normally when you cast it out, it'll have a little slightly different action, but you're basically just jumping it up off the bottom. Just have it hop and have a tip up like that. That's what we're looking for. Now we're gonna switch over to the shaky head. So you guys can see what this looks like when it first drops in. All right, shaky head here. Because it's got the round soft bottom that normally when you're digging into sand and into dirt, it will stand that tail up. And you see the tail's trying to stand up already. But in dirt, that ball digs into dirt a little better versus this hard plastic bottom. And therefore, you're just bouncing it. Every so often, you give it a couple seconds to bounce. You make it look like it's alive. Even with this version that has the hook exposed. You give it a nice little tap, tap, tap. You don't even have to flip your rod up that high. The tip is very sensitive to it. This is very light flicks. See, I can have it in the water dancing with very minimal effort. So you're just giving small, small flicks. Big hops every now and then. Make sure you're getting over cover, especially since this one has the hook exposed. You got it out here doing backflips. We're switching over to the flat bottom shaky head. So that way you can see the difference in the two. See that flat bottom is it's a little more easy for it to stand up and have its action. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to look like that in the water. Stand up every time. That's the point of that one. And normally the current itself will make the tail move. Like right now the water is making the tail move on its own. Which is what it's supposed to do. You hop it around a little bit. You get some really good action off of it couple of jigs it always tries to land on his head all right and for the final the wacky rig the wacky rig sinks to the bottom slowly for the most part see that slow fall most times that is going to get eight or something just after it hits the water it's going it's to hit the water bloop and it's going to slowly drop down to the bottom and something will normally eat it by then but in case it doesn't you see that small jerk how it makes the, lip, the tips flutter that's what you want one of my favorite techniques to fish but in much deeper water that technique is flawless 
you just give it a nice couple of shakes tap 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 make it let it sink let it rest something's probably sitting there because bass have a tendency to sneak up on it and just sit there and watch it for a while to see what it is see if it wants to eat it so you gotta give it that rest to let it sit and then you always have to kind of quickly get it up out of there and that normally startles them and, and forces them to strike from reaction because they want to eat it before it gets away even though they're not sure of what it is but that action is is flawless right there yank yank let it fall all right everybody thank you for coming and hanging out and watching these rustic crusted videos with me hope you got a chance to enjoy that maybe even picked up on something new that you didn't know about bass fishing and lures that you know can come in handy for you in the future it's my first time trying something like this so of course if you have any updates or anything that can help build the channel please comment them down below always please remember to like comment and subscribe let's try to blow this channel up i want to take off and be out of here you understand how it is always trying to upgrade the channel always trying to do something different so i try something a little different hope that works out we might do more of it in the future if you guys like it so anyway i got some new merch being sold now through teespring the link will be in the top of the description i got my own little page now i got a couple of designs out there and if you order now you can still get these before christmas time so go ahead and check me out support the channel and i truly appreciate you guys thanks for spending your time until next time i'm out mm -hmm.